Hi, how you doing? We're going to talk about how is it that I graph something that's got a vertical shift, a phase shift, a period change, and an amplitude change occurring on a uh, function all at one time. So what I have written up here is y equals d plus a cosine of the value of b times x minus c, that quantity. What that means is that this right here is the generic equation for all functions, where if you have some value and you're adding it to your actual function, that is your vertical shift, and what I want you to note is that this d can be either on the left or it can be on the right. In this particular function down below, we find that I'm adding one outside of the function here. So that is my vertical shift. So the vertical shift in this case is plus one, which means vertical change, Positive goes up, negative goes down. So what this means is that I'm actually moving my entire, my entire axis is going to move. The original function was, uh, was centered around the zero axis, so now it's going to be up one, which means I'm now going to have a new axis centered around one. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw this in. So this is one. So I'm going to draw a new axis, and I'm just going to dash it. So here's the dash. Okay, so there's my new axis of where my function will be centered around. So I come back to here, I've now got that. I now need to look at the phase shift, and the phase shift is determined by the, uh, where the period, how long the period is, and it's also determined by uh, if there's any movement of the actual uh, function to the right or to the left, and that's what a phase shift is. And that's affected by the period, because that phase shift is based off of being a, a subtraction or addition of the values that are occurring inside of this function. So the way that you find that is that the original cosine function goes from zero, and my, all of my domain values are going to also go from zero to two pi. So the original function is just cosine of x, which states that x then goes from 0 to 2 pi. Well, this value in here now changes it. So I now have 3x minus pi over 2. So that is actually changing my x domain. So I now have to change my original domain of 0 to 2 pi. And the way you do that is by setting up the compound inequality of taking whatever you're taking the cosine of, okay, the actual function cosine, whatever you're taking it of, and plugging it into your, uh, the original statement of the domain of the cosine function. So this now becomes 0, and we get 3x minus pi over 2. And what I now need to do is go through and solve so that I have the new domain, where x is stating that my x values go from here to here. So I'm just going to go through and solve. So plus pi over 2 plus pi over 2, so this is just the idea of solving a compound inequality, and I've got pi over 2 is less than or equal to 3x, which is less than or equal to 5 pi over 2. So then I go through and divide by 3, and when I divide a fraction, I'm really multiplying by a reciprocal, so I'm going to multiply by 1 third here. So what I've now got is that my x values go from pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6. So what this now occurs to me is that my phase shift was originally, if there was no phase shift, it means my starting point would stay at, at 0. But there is a phase shift. And the way you have a phase shift is you compare your starting point with your new starting point. And my phase shift started at 0 and ended at pi over 6. So the phase means that I have a shift of pi over 6 to the right. Now remember that pi over 6 to the right means that uh, the phase shift, which is your horizontal shift, is talking about that it started at 0 and it went to the right. And it goes to the right because this is a positive pi over 6. If it were negative, then my shift would obviously be to the left. So I've got pi over 6. So period. Let's take a look at period. Two ways you can find period. If you have a shift here. You can talk about your periods being your starting and your ending point. So if you took 5 pi over 6 minus pi over 6, you would find that that answer is 2 pi divided by 3 because 4 pi over 6. 5 minus 1 is 4. 4 over 6 is 2 thirds. So my period is 2 pi over 3. Or the other way, and I do both of them just to check to make sure I did this work correctly, 
is that you take the coefficient of x, which tells you how many cycles are in 2 pi, and you divide it. So you take 2 pi divided by 3. And 2 pi divided by 3, well, there it is, 2 pi divided by 3. The interval is how much each step it takes to go from your maximum to your zero, to your minimums, to your maximums, to your zeros, and so forth. So the way you do that is you break your period into four equal amounts. So 2 thirds broken into four equivalent amounts happens to be 2 pi over 12. So when you divide this by 4, you get 2 pi over 12. Well, that breaks down into being pi over 6. So I'm going to write this as pi over 6. So my interval shift, my interval lengths are pi over 6. Amplitude, amplitude is the multiplier of your function. So the amplitude here is 2 pi, or is 2 thirds. So up here I now have my amplitude is 2 thirds. So I now have everything I need to go through and graph. I've got my axis centered at 1. I know I've got a phase shift of pi over 6, so my new starting point is pi over 6. Now, before I go to the end, I, what I'm going to do is start using my intervals. So my intervals are pi over 6 each time. So pi over 6. I then make another interval of pi over 6. So which is 2 pi over 6? Which is pi over 3? I keep going. Pi over 6 to 2 pi over 6 is 3 pi over 6, which makes this pi over 2. Keep on going. And then I get 3 pi over 6. I get 4 pi over 6, which is 2 pi over 3. And then last but not least, I add another pi over 6, and I get to 5 pi over 6. So now that I have my axis completely labeled, I'm now going to go through and utilize my amplitude so I can go ahead and graph. So the amplitude for the cosine means that my function, since it's positive, is going to start at a maximum. So I start up a maximum. So if this were 2 and this is 0, I go 2 thirds of the way up. So my amplitude is a height of two-thirds above my new axis. So it doesn't ever make the two. It makes it close to it. So for me, I'm going to break this into having little interval steps. So one, two, one, two. So this is one-third, two-thirds, three-thirds would make it up to two. So I'm going to start at my maximum here because it's the cosine, and then my next value is a zero. My next interval is down to its minimum, then up to its zero, then back up to its maximum. So I just go through and utilize the pattern, and then I take my values after the pattern has gone through, and I, use, and I just connect it with a smooth curve. So I go ahead and connect it with a smooth curve, and then after my smooth curve and my points are all connected, I now have a final function drawn in here of 2 pi, or two thirds cosine times the, uh, of the quantity 3x minus pi over 2 plus 1, and there's the graph for it. What I want to take note of very quickly is that if this were the sine function, and I'm going to go ahead and do this in red, that if this were the sine function, all of my work would be exactly the same, except the only difference is, is my pattern of where I would start. Sine function always starts at the axis value. So I'd be starting at 1, so I'm just going to go ahead and draw this point in. I would then go to the maximum, I'd then go to 0. I'd then go to the minimum, and I'd go back to zero. So in red, I just want to show you what the sine function would have been. So I drew it in with a dash there, just so not to confuse you. But the only difference is, is that the values of the patterns that I take. All the work that I've done here is all exactly the same. The only difference is, is you have to realize the pattern of the cosine and the sine functions, where the sine functions will always start at a zeroing value, which is along your axis, and the cosine function will always start at a maximum or a minimum, depending on if it's a positive or negative function. So I hope that helps for your homework.